Right guys, welcome back to another video on the channel and today we are doing a video about the B-Map. Now, before you guys say anything, I know I'm filming from a different location. Now, if you've seen some of my earlier videos, you might realise that my current location has been wiped out a little bit by litter and clutter and it's not looking very presentable at the moment. So I thought I'd just switch it up a little bit and um, come film in a much more plain background, which might help you guys. But um, hopefully we'll get back to that location soon once it's cleared and we'll be back to that um, in a bit. But today we're talking about the BMAT and the biggest mistake I made in my BMAT. And now it's a very interesting video, but before we get into the video, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button down below. Um, let's get to 200 subscribers by the end of March, let's say. And it's optimistic, but hopefully we can hit it. So just go down and hit the subscribe button down below. It's free. You don't have to do anything apart from just tapping a button literally on the screen. So would really appreciate it if you guys can do that. It puts a smile on my face. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now the biggest mistake I made in my VMAT application, well there are quite a few I'd say, but um, I think in terms of my score, now you guys might know my score, you might, you guys might not know my score, but let's quickly say what it is. But very briefly, what I got was a 5.9 in section one, a 5.1 in section two, and a 3.5A in section three, or the essay section. Now, it's a decent score, um, it's not too shabby, but it's not brilliant. Now, my year group was particularly tricky and the average I think was quite low. So, you know, that was a nice thing to see that, you know, I didn't do really badly. Um, but, you know, overall, I would have liked to get a lot higher in my BMAT. And I think that's something a lot of you guys would want to do more as well. So, um, what did I do wrong? Well, the biggest mistake I'd say I made in my BMAT was my prep time. Now, prep time is a very important thing in the BMAT. It's very much a negotiation and it's also very much a um, productive challenge. Now I'm going to split this video into two bits. First we're going to talk about the negotiation, second we're going to talk about the productivity aspect. So the negotiation, what do I mean? Well, when you're negotiating prep time with BMAT, you are putting something else in jeopardy. That is your UCAT. Your UCAT and BMAT likely come around the same time. So it depends again on a lot of things. Now I'd say if you're going for two UCAT universities and two BMAT universities, you want to set your UCAT somewhere in early August, mid-August. Start revising from the end of July to mid-August. You get one month of solid, hard revision. And then you also get mid-August to, you know, early September. So you get two to three weeks of solid revision for your BMAT. And that's good enough. The reason being you need less revision is because section one of the BMAT is very similar to pretty much all sections in the UCAT because it's very much a non-verbal section. And that means that you don't need to revise a lot of new things. But what you do need to do in your BMAT revision is to focus on section two. Section two is super important and it's super easy to do well in. A lot of people just don't do well in it like me because I didn't, you know, do a lot of practice and preparation for it. So when I say revise, it means revise your GCSEs. You don't need to revise everything because I'm assuming you, by this point you'll have done GCSE biology, physics, chemistry, maths, and you're doing A-levels in most of these subjects. The only main bit of revision you need to do is potentially GCSE physics if you've forgotten it or if you're not taking it. However, what I would really say is to spend some time on it, do some practice questions, really get good at doing section two on a time condition. It's a very time heavy section and you need to be good at, you know, speeding through that section. So that's why you only need two to three weeks of BMAT. And really, it is up to you guys. If you're doing three BMAT universities and one UCAT, which is quite risky, um, I would obviously say spend a lot more time in BMAT. So potentially start to set your UCAT early August. So you get at least a month for your BMAT preparation, a month of dedicated BMAT revision. Um, this also means you can't revise your A-levels during summer, which I would recommend not doing um, because you're going to spend a lot of time on it in September and October. But yeah, BMAT again, it's a negotiation, you guys. And I really think you need to think it through depending on how many BMAT universities you're going to sit and how confident you are with the UCAT. Now, the BMAT is very pressured in terms of revision. You've only got a few weeks, ideally, to do revision. Um, before A levels start. Now, after A levels, you can do BMAT revision, and you definitely should still do BMAT revision. You don't want to forget about it and come back to it thinking, "Oh wait, I've forgotten about how to do my BMAT." No, you want to keep running it, but obviously at you know a lower intensity while your A levels are going alongside it. But your initial revision in the summer holidays will be roughly a few weeks long. And how do you stay productive? Now, it's very easy to just get sidetracked and you know waste your days away when you've got nothing else going on. It's an interesting paradox that we actually do better when we're pressured. Um, that's the unfortunate thing. That just, it doesn't mean that you have to be pressured when you revise. It means when we're not pressured, we tend to you know, sit back a little bit, take our foot off the pedal, and we don't revise with as much intensity. Now that's a big problem. So how do you stay productive? Well, make sure you schedule your BMAT revision. So schedule every single day. Um, I found that the more I schedule my revision periods for anything, 
the better I do in exams because I know I'm covering everything. I'm you know confident and I'm not worried. I'm missing out on anything. Um, I also don't waste time every day thinking about what am I going to do today. I don't waste time thinking oh wait I've got to do this. I've got to do this because I know I'm going to do it at a particular date. It's all on my schedule. And you know scheduling. You know it might seem like a waste of time to you guys to make up a color coded schedule. But what I mean is not making up this fancy little schedule. You know on Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or, or Excel or whatever. Literally on your calendar, on your phone, on your computer. Put literally two, three lines of what you're gonna revise on that day. That's it. You don't need to make any color-coded fanciness. Literally, it's topics that you want to finish on that day, put them on, you know, every single day in your calendar. And then if you finish it, you can tick it off and it means, you know, you feel good, you've finished something. And as well as this, um, if you don't finish it, you can just move it to another day and, you know, you're confident that you're doing everything that's next. Now, obviously you need to actually prepare by practice paper. So the BMAT is on pen and paper, so you don't want to do it on the computer. So it means you need to leave at least two to three weeks, I'd say, towards the end, towards the BMAT date. So this is towards the end part of your revision, just doing past papers, you know, and doing them under time conditions. So I don't want you to really be doing them. And I think it's really kind of productive to do them without timing because the BNAT isn't without timing, so there's no real point in it. So just do it under timed um, environment and you'll do really well because as long as you get the timing right, that's really 75% of the BMAT um, secured. Um, for me, I bottled a lot of my marks because I wasn't on good terms with the times of the BMAT. So I think if you do well in timing, you're gonna do well in the exams. So yeah, that's what I would say. That's how to stay productive, schedule it, and be time aware. So that's everything really. Uh, make sure you're negotiating with your UCAT and make sure you're staying scheduled and make sure you're sticking to time management. So that's everything in the video, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully um, it's been useful to you guys to hear about what I didn't do so well with my BMAT on. And you know, it might mean that you guys do a little bit better, which I hope that you guys do. It'll hopefully make this video useful. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.